Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing our series of videos with respect to inspiration, information, education, guidance, uh, advice, and I want to tell you one more story about uh, Rabbi uh, Elimelech of Lezhensk. For the last two years of Rabbi Elimelech's life, he ate and drank very, very little. And even then, only when his family uh, urged him to, uh, one day, his son Eliezer, begging him with tears in his eyes, please, Tati, please, have something to eat, have some food, you have to, you have to sustain your life, you have to keep up your strength. And uh, Rabbi Ali Melech would smile and say, if only, if only I had some of that delicious gruel that, uh, that was served to us in this little red inn near the Nista River, and there's a river in the, the Ukraine. When my brother Rabzusha and I were traveling, during our, our, our travels, this little inn gave us this gruel. It was, if only I had some of that. After the death of Rabbi Elimelech of Lezhensk, his son Eliezer uh, went in search of this inn on the Nista River. He came upon the Red Inn. To call it an inn was frankly an exaggeration. It was, it was a house. It was some, a poor Jewish couple uh, had it, and they would sometimes you know, rent out a room for a night or so. And, Nebuchadnezzar books a room for a night or so. And he says, um, uh, what do you have to eat? And the, uh, the wife of the innkeeper says, well, we're rather poor and rather simple. We make uh, vodka and we barter it in the market for some, uh, some, uh, uh, some peas and some uh, flour and some, um, some dried beans. And with this, we make a very simple, um, thin gruel. Immediately, Rabbi Gazer says, prepare it for me immediately. Now, the Red Inn didn't have a lot of guests, and uh, they didn't have a lot of Hasidic guests. So Rabbi Eliezer kind of stood out. Um, so, nonetheless, by the time he finished uh, Mincha, the afternoon uh, prayers, uh, he found that there was a, a nice piping hot bowl of this thin um, flour and peas and beans gruel, this, this thin soup. He sits down, he picks up the spoon, finishes the plate, asks for a second, finishes the second bowl asks for a third, finishes the last bowl. And he says, tell me, this, this, what, what did you put into the soup? It's, it was the most, one of the most delicious things I've ever had. And he's pressing her for, for like the recipe, how did you make the soup? And the old Jewish woman, she says, Believe me, Rabbi, I don't put in anything. I really don't. Um, if it tastes good to you, you know, Shemai in paradise is, is responsible for it. And Rabbi Yezir says, well, what do you mean? He says, years ago, uh, there were these two brothers, these Hasidic rabbis, they would come by, they would come by and they would stay and uh, at our place, and they needed food, and the only thing I could make was this, this gruel. And I could see that they were holy men. And I was making this simple gruel of dried peas, dried beans, a little bit of flour, and I begged Hashem, Master of the Universe, I have nothing to give these holy men. Please you know, put in it some spices, some herbs from heaven, because, you know, they deserve something good to eat. And I would give this 
gruel to them and, and, and they would ask for bowl after bowl after bowl, just like you did. And um, Rabbi Eliezer said, he says, ma'am, this soup tasted of Loyal Maboa, the world to come, it tasted of paradise. And she says, to tell you the truth, I've not made this gruel in a very, very long time. I recognize that you're a Hasidic guy. So when I made the soup for them and I prayed that it would, you know, that there would be herbs and spices uh, from paradise, when I was making the soup today, I said the same prayer. And um, just now, I mean, as I was making the soup, I prayed again. I asked Hashem to, um, to flavor it from paradise. Um, we're going to be doing more Hasidic stories. Um, I may or may not do a couple more stories of Rabbi Elimelech uh, of Lezhensk. Um, but as we go through uh, the years of the Hasidic masters and uh, the tzaddikim and these great men of the past, uh, I hope you find in them some, um, some inspiration, um, some amusement, uh, and some uh, uh, guidance. Um, the holy men, the, the true tzaddikim of past generations, um, as the Psalms say, the holy ones interred in the earth um, can be a great source of guidance and a great source of hope, uh, sometimes in hopeless times. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, as many as Hashem will let me. Uh, until next time, uh, on behalf of the Yamuna Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.